I'd like to thank the organizer for inviting me for this uh, awesome hackathon event. Uh, my name is Yosuke Tanigawa, a PhD candidate in Stanford University, working with two groups, uh, Manuel Rivers and Gil Bejrano. Um, thank you very much. Uh, today I'd like to talk about some application-specific ontology uh, for our analysis of non-coding genome, which I name as transcription factor ontology. Um, oops. So I study genomics, uh, basically trying to understand the type of genetic variation influence on different types of like biological function, including cellular differentiation, diseases, pathway, and so on. Uh, one of the important key regulators on the genome is a transcription factor. Transcription factor is a certain set of protein that binds to DNA and regulate their uh, gene expression. For example, here we see different types of cell types, like most of them are fibroblasts. If you have a particular gene, like MyoD, the cell direct the, uh, their destiny towards like a muscle cell. If you get other types of like transcriptional factor, their destiny can be changed to different types of cell types. So understanding the role of transcriptional factor is very important in biomedical applications for most of the cases. As I briefly mentioned that, like a transcription factor is a protein that binds to DNA. Here I show some schematic representation from some encode news article, where if you look at the DNA glossary, there is a protein binding to the DNA, which I circle in the red. So and then they interact with the neighboring elements on the genome, and then try to like uh, express or repress the neighboring gene. So we know how it works. And um, but like uh, the, there is increasing evidence that like this kind of transcription misregulation leads to human diseases. For example, if you know that specific gene expression is disrupted in certain contexts, they can change developmental like disorders or cancer or like immune like disorders and so on. Um, in the Vigilano lab, people have recently shown that a combination of rare genetic variation and common genetic variation contributes to like, increase or decrease the risk of diseases. And so my, our hope is that like, if you understand like, what's going on in the transcriptional regulation space, we can have a better understanding of what's going on in terms of like, a molecular basis of different types of diseases. But most of the analysis tool available today is sort of under par because data is not in a good fashion, like it's not usable. So how can we study this kind of transcription factor? There are several different kinds of ways to approach this kind of approach. One is doing some experiments, such as GIP-seq experiments, chromatine precipitation followed by sequencing. So this is basically using antibody to select some DNA fragment bounded by a specific protein and use the DNA sequencing technologies to collect where the peak exists, like such as like that, that kind of like uh, a special distribution of transcription factor is very informative, uh, not only for uh, where the binding site will be, but also for the function. Uh, recently, some analysis from like Chip Atlas for other types of like project have a large collection for this kind of data set. So like there are a lot of data uh, waiting for us to be analyzed. However, there is a major challenge that, like uh, as Sebastian mentioned, that there is a lot of different kinds of cell types. Here I have some schematic representation from Encore project. On the vertical axis, they lay out different types of cell types. Like uh, as of like 2012, there are like different hundreds of cell types. Now with the uh, emergence of single cell like sequencing or single cell profiling technology, there are like uh, you know thousands of different cell types in the human body. And if you like to study transcription factor you need to consider all the possible combination of different kinds of cell types and different kinds of transcription factor. Um, unfortunately, there are like 1,500 different kinds of transcription factor in human genome. So considering all the possible combination of different cell types and different types of transcription factor is nearly impossible. So I think like uh, the field will characterize several important transcription factors for like, uh, like uh, most of the cell types, and also like uh, they pick several important cell types and try to characterize for many, many different transcription factors, but we'll never get the full data for all the possible combinations. So where that's the kind of opportunity exists for us, for bioinformatics people to like think about how to like do efficient inference using that kind of missing data. Another approach is instead of like a doing some experiment for all possible combination of cell type and transcription factor, people started to realize that they can summarize the binding affinity of the transcription factor using sequence motif. Here I have some example from some public data set, like this is a binding motif for GATA protein. So this protein binds to the DNA with that kind of sequence signature. 
So in principle, if you characterize this kind of binding affinity for a transcription factor, you can scan the genome and try to identify where will be the binding factor, although there is uh, some challenges of the cell type specificity, but there are some algorithms doing that business very well. So if you like to do some inference, like uh, basically looking at experimentally characterized data and try to understand what's going on behind the scene for diseases or biological processes or uh, developmental trajectory, you have several different problems. Uh, first one is like missing data. As I mentioned, that like uh, the total number of combination of the different kinds of cell types and different kinds of transcription factor is huge. And given the increasing effort from the community, such as Cell Atlas Project, this combination is keep increasing. So we cannot exper do experiment for everything. And if you look at the biological function of transcription factor, they bind to DNA as a consequence of environmental stimuli. It can be coming from some signaling process, from uh, environment sensing, or some types of like uh, interaction with some environment. So in principle, if we have a better annotation for each of a protein, you may infer, given that this transcription factor is activated in a specific context, you may infer what will be the upstream signaling that activates that specific transcription program. That can improve our understanding what's going on in, the molecular, in terms of molecular basis of different diseases. And more trickily, I mentioned that there are 1,500 different kinds of transcription factor. They are not independent with each other. They are a result of the evolutionary path process. So if you look at the sequence affinity of the different transition factor, I have three examples. They look very similar, but they are like sequence motif for three different kinds of genes. So this is uh, expected because they are a result of evolution. So they, they are like a sequence binding affinity, and their biological functions are very correlated with each other. So this is uh, challenging, but also provides some opportunity. One is challenging because like, if, you, if you don't have a good data annotation, you can be easily confused like what kind of transcription factor is important for a given context. But if you can like, annotate the data set in a proper way and use that similarity to fill in the gap on the missing data, you can do a better job with the limited data. And also, this protein works in dimer in many cases, so like, that kind of information needs to be stored. Currently, like these data exist in different domains. If you look at the OVO Foundation, there is like a reactome, like a pathway information, or some sort of like a GWAS catalog types of information to link some particular transition factor, transition factor gene body mutation to the disease risk. But like uh, integration of these like different kind of data set is not a trivial task. So I propose to like uh, build some working version of the ontology or structural representation of this kind of information. Uh, in this hackathon, I'd like to build uh, some working version of transcription factor ontology, which would be the application ontology. We are not building everything from scratch, but try to like integrate different data sources and build some like RDF uh, uh, Sparkle query endpoint and use some protege to like build some like structural representation while keeping the reference to the original data. Once we have this kind of application specific ontology, we should be able to answer a lot of interesting questions. Uh, for example, if you like to study specific function of transition factor in a given context, you can find the exact match from some experiment. If not, you can try to find a good proxy for that kind of application. Um, if you use the data set, like, uh, you can do the better job to interpret the enrichment analysis from like gene set or gene regulatory, region enrichment set analysis, like trying to connect the regulatory domain variation into the related pathway. And um, given that like a transition factor interact with each other, this can be useful to analyze like uh, epistasis interaction between different kinds of genes, and um, like uh, give combine them together. You can try to like uh, infer what's going on in the disease sample and try to answer epigenetic basis of different kinds of diseases. Um, taken together, we can generate new hypothesis to like uh, find therapeutic target for difficult diseases. Um, I think uh, we, the primary goal of the hackathon would be the building working version of the ontology, but in the future I'd like to integrate this kind of uh, the structure representation for existing web application, such as like uh, gen generic genomic region arrangement analysis, trying to like uh, infer the function of the gene set or region set, and in the future, like if you find particular function, you may infer what kind of transcription factor is driving specific function given the cell, 
or try to integrate some like a population-based bioavailable analysis. You have different kinds of diseases and try to infer what kind of transcription factor works in the particular context. These tools are available from my lab, so it should be easy to integrate with this. Thank you very much. Happy to collaborate and ask some questions.